Good afternoon class. So today we're going to discuss about planning 2. So this has a total of 31 slides. So for this week, I'm going to discuss the first 15 slides. So it's about the sense of space, place, and community, which is session 1. So this slide was designed by architect Mary Rada Villaseca, the fundamentals of urban design and community architecture. So planning, the general idea. It is a human activity that considers outcomes before choosing among alternatives. So it is primarily goal-oriented and focused on making a choice. So that's what happens when you make a plan. Okay. So basically, when you make a plan, you think of something, you think of a certain goal, and you think of making choices along the way in order to achieve uh, the things that you want to achieve. So that's the goal of planning. Second, so there are seven types of planning. So we have site planning. So that's in the context of built environments. Second is subdivision planning, uh, urban space planning, town or city planning, urban planning, regional planning, and national development planning. However, the course coverage would be urban space planning and town or city planning. So, of the seven types of planning, we're going to discuss all, but we're going to focus on number three and four only for this course. So, for the first one, site planning, this is an architectural in scope. It tends to manipulate the physical composition of a site relative to an immediate structure. Second, subdivision planning. Planning that is predominantly residential and ranges from the medium to large scale. So, I think it's self-explanatory. Already. Then we have three or three and four, which is the coverage for this course. The first is urban space planning, which is planning that is typically for in city sites. Concerned about the relationship of exterior spaces, for example, the parks to buildings. Then the town and our city planning. Planning that involves large and city wide areas and covers all aspects of planning, often political and policy oriented. So those are three and four which is be the coverage of our course. We have the fifth, urban planning, which assesses the growth strategies of towns and cities. Regional planning, which is planning at a macro view, assesses the relationships of towns and cities in the same region. And we have national development planning, planning that involves the entire country, mainly considering national development, taking into account GDP, GNP, employment, and external trade. I think GNP here is gross national happiness. Then what are you going to expect from this course? So there are four things. First is that an in-depth appreciation of socio-cultural factors as predominant considerations for designing urban and special types of communities. Second, an understanding of the impact of social political policies and its impact on physical design. The third, a conception of the finite limitations of environmental resources and taking into consideration in designing the built environment. And the fourth, an understanding of the synergistic relationship between policy, the built environment, and sustainability. So when, when you mean synergy, they help each other out in order to create an effect that is uh, quite uh, big. Or what you call this, an effect that, when you call that synergy, when those three elements fuse together, it produces something that is quite good. Okay. So let's move then the urban form. So let's think about what defines the urban form, what is it made of, and what is an urban area. So let's go back to urbanism. So urbanism is a state of mind, a broad concept of generally referring to all aspects of the urban way of life. So hence, an urbanite is an individual with an urban way of life. The urbanite resides in an urbanized area, a geographic location bound by space that exhibits urban symptoms. So... I guess we are living in a city. Uh, even if this is a small city, 
may somewhat we could be called an urbanite since we're living in an urbanized area with hundreds of thousands of people living here but in the example I guess it's in Paris or uh, either it's in Paris or in Tokyo so they're probably talking about millions of residents in a small uh, uh, space uh, since there are high-rise uh, buildings all around then the physical base the physical base refers to the elements of the city that give it form for example the road network and structures then we have the economic base the economic base pertains to the factors that allow a city to thrive or exist for example the livelihood okay so there's a lot uh, there's a lot of cities i think they have a different uh, they have different economic bases for example the livelihood in another city could be different from the livelihood of another city i think for here in the philippines we are mostly on service oriented we are service oriented economy so we focus mainly on services but if you go to other cities you could see that there are industrial cities also especially in saudi arabia there's an industrial city there their main their main livelihood would be mostly on industries then you have the political base refers to the legal or policy oriented confinements and norms of a city that gives it order and structure so what do you think is the political base of our city kali and the oro city so that would be the political base and we have the social base the social base of a city refers to the things and activities that give vitality and meaning to a city for example the cultural identifiers i think um cultural identifiers when you think about it when you look at the more advanced cities like in hong kong they have science centers they have museums yeah and something like that here in, here in Cagayan de Oro, um, let's think about the cultural identifiers that we could find here. And for a society to be established or as urban, the four bases, namely the physical, the economic, political, and social must be well defined. Okay. So the physical aspect, the road networks, the economic aspects, uh, what's the main livelihood of the city, then the political aspects, and then the social aspects. It would be nice if we have an arena here. I think it could also be a cultural identifier. I think maybe in some of the cities in the United States, when you look at their stadiums, baseball stadiums, and... Um, football stadiums i think that would be their cultural identifier because the they mainly the americans may, uh, mainly like uh, are into sports so let's look at cebu city for the physical identifier i think you could uh, have already an, an idea of the road networks that exist in Cebu. I think it's one of the the best transportation networks in the country because Cebu is a progressive city. Okay. For the economic base, aside from maybe it's uh, service oriented, you could also find that their products are mainly dried mangoes and uh, dried fish. Here in Cagayan de Oro, um, no, not so sure what we have here. Maybe we're a service oriented economy, then we also have here some uh, produce from Bukidnon such as pineapples. For the political, we have here the official seal of the city of Cebu which establishes the fact that as a political system it's governed by the city mayor. And for the social, I think when you think about Cebu, you think about the Sinulog Festival. Kagen Oro, when you think about Kagen Oro, what do you think? I think it's the city of golden friendship, uh, perhaps. 
So hence, urbanization is a process that discusses cumulative growth in these four bases. So you have to think about these four bases in order to define urbanization. So these are cities with over 10 million uh, inhabitants. Okay. If you look at the map, we have Los Angeles City, Mexico City, New York City, we have Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, Lagos, Paris, Cairo, Istanbul, Moscow, Karachi, Mumbai, Delhi, Dhaka, Calcutta, Beijing, Shanghai, Tokyo, Osaka, Kobe, and Manila. Okay. So these are cities with more than 10 million inhabitants. So I think in the it's written there, it's in it's taken by NASA in 2000. So urbanization is the process of urban growth. Then there are two types, movements of the people from the rural to the urban, the change of lifestyle, the values, attitude, behavior from rural to urban. So when you think about it, mm, there's a lot of, of, of people from the rural areas that go to Manila to seek for employment opportunities. So as they go to Manila, they experience changes in lifestyle. For example, their values, their attitude, and their behavior. Because I think most from the rural uh, communities here in the Philippines, they are much more conservative by nature. And then when they go to uh, cities like Manila, uh, big cities like Manila, which has a large population, they tend to be more westernized as they do that. So there's a, a behavior. Uh, like that. And, and that's not only um, true to the Philippines. When you go to uh, Beijing and China, those from the rural areas who go, who go to the more urbanized areas, they seem to be more, I think they get, they get surprised by the tall buildings, by the difference in culture, and how people interact in cities compared to those who are in rural areas. Okay, so what's urban planning? So urban planning is the control of housing and land uses. So the design of urban development, infrastructure, transportation networks, and includes the consideration of urban regeneration. So we'll do this lecture next week, guys, because we're already at the 15th slide. So our next lecture after this will be about uh, continuation of this urban planning. So, I want you to reflect on, on this. So, this is the process of organ, urban growth. When you think about the Philippines, most of the development, it's really in the, in the cities compared to the rural areas. So, the behavior of urbanites are different from those who came from um, the provinces right now then maybe we should look into what are the cultural identifiers no social identifiers for our city as well in Cagandioro what is Cagandioro known about which could act as a social identifier in just my own opinion it would be nice if um, we have something that we could really call it's uniquely in uh, Cagayan if you look at uh, the definition for the social aspect, so these are the things that give vitality and meaning to, uh, meaning to a city. This could also mean things that um, promote a city, such as having museums and science centers. Because what we really lack here in the Philippines is um, industrial development. And we can't have industrial development unless we are heavily focused on science and technology. Okay. In terms of the physical, we already we already have a uh, road networks here in the in Cagayan de Oro, but I think it still needs uh, development. What we lack probably are 
loading and unloading areas for buses, um, established bike lanes, and then it would be nice if we, when we walk uh, throughout the city that there are trees, but it gets really hot during midday. Perhaps these are things that were not uh, implemented properly when our country developed. But maybe in the future, we could have a much better uh, urban landscape for our, for our cities, especially in Cagayan de Oro. But we are still a young republic and the Philippines has a long way to go before it becomes our first world country. Okay, So I'll be posting our activity in our Padlet link. Um, see you guys next week.